Ellis Beef Easter's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. Where's me pot of gold? Okay. Good afternoon, New England. Hello, New England. 1-617-266-6868. That's the, that's the number. I guess that's still the number. This is Howie Carr. That's Jerry Williams' theme music. Jerry is, uh, Jerry Williams is passed on. This morning, about 5 a.m. Eastern Time at uh, Mass General Hospital, had been in declining health for a while. Got his last show about uh, six weeks about about six weeks ago, I guess, on uh, on this radio station. His last big Boston home, and uh, we're going to talk about Jerry for a while longer. At uh, and the toll free number, if you'd like to join us, is one eight seven seven four six nine four three two two one eight seven seven four six nine four three two two. If you want to leave a message on the chump line. The recorded voicemail message service of the Howie Car Show. Call 617-779-3469. 617-779-3469. Our fax number 617-779-3467. You can always try to listen to the show on the Internet, howiecar.org. We don't have a poll question today. And uh, you can always send us an email at howiecar at wrko.com. Now joining us for a few minutes is uh, someone who worked with uh, Jerry in the uh, the golden age of uh, talk radio in Boston, and uh, I would say that would be the uh, the 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 80s and the 90s, the early 90s, and that's uh, Gene Burns. He's now on uh, KGO in San Francisco. Gene, thanks for being with us on this sad day. Well, Howie, a pleasure to talk to you. I wish the circumstances under which we're talking were a bit better. I I got a call about seven o'clock West Coast time this morning uh, telling me that Jerry had died. I. Uh, it's sort of a bittersweet day. I mean, on the one hand, talk radio has lost one of its real giants and one of its founders. And on the other hand, as you know and as you've been saying, I mean, we're flooded with uh, a whole parcel of great memories of working with Jerry, who was a real professional. Yeah, he was. Someone just sent me an, e- and, uh, an email. We just played the cut with him and Ted Kennedy <laughs> when Ted Kennedy was in the limousine. And the person remembered it just like I did yesterday. You remember the exact time of it, how long it was. It, it, there were just so many moments like that with Jerry. Well, there were moments like that. And, and I, I guess some, some of the moments that uh, have sort of faded into history but are very, very important. I mean, back in the early days when Jerry was one of the lone liberal voices around, uh, he lived under constant death threats when he would have Malcolm X on the program, which he did many times. They had to have security at the station because people would threaten to come down and kill them both. He really was not only a pioneer, but a very gutsy guy. I mean, I remember, the, as you do, the, the battle over the seat belts. That actually cost him a fair amount of audience uh, during the time he waged that battle, but... He beat right. the insurance companies at their own game. He really was a remarkable man. And they, they pulled his uh, voting records. They, they went after him on a, on a number of different levels. Oh, my. Yeah, I mean, they, boy, oh, boy. You know, some of us would have been proud to be on Nixon's list. Jerry was on a list of his own that uh, was yep. maintained fairly well by the state and of they tried, and Nixon And Nixon tried to, uh, Nixon tried, well, I don't know, Westinghouse, I'm sure, had a lot of pressure when uh, when he gave the uh, tape of, the famous tape of the, uh, the, the the Vietnam veteran on his on his show on uh, the Clear Channel station WBZ. Yeah, absolutely. Went, remember that? And he I and do. Uh, they and, and George McGovern started running around the country playing it. And right. uh, and I, I I I still remember. You know, they said that night when the story first broke, they said George McGovern was given a copy of a tape from a Boston radio talk show host. <laughs> and I didn't. You didn't have to tell me who that radio talk show host was, Gene. Cause, no, he was I one knew. of a kind. He was one of a kind, and I. He did so much and accomplished so much in his career that it's it's hard to isolate on any particular thing that he did that was more important than any other. But he was a real pioneer. You know the thing that always got me, Gene, is he he always he always felt uh, uh, slighted when someone called him an entertainer. And and I used to tell him, I said, what. Why do you why do you uh, recoil from being called an entertainer? I mean, if you you've got a big audience here, you if you yeah. if you can't keep the audience, you can't teach them anything. No, I mean, who would not remember with glee the rants that Jerry used to get into? I've I, one I remember the teeny tiny table for two. The man was obsessed about going to a restaurant and being put at a table for two, even if he was alone or there were just two of them. And he would get into these. He would go on for ten, fifteen. 15, 20 minutes, the teeny tiny table 
too. It was brilliant, but it was pure entertainment. And as you say, he never wanted to call it that. Yeah, and then the, the, uh, we were talking too about sometimes he would come out, and if, if it was if it was really a portentous moment or, or whatever, or he just wanted to build suspense, he would come out. The music would end, and he wouldn't speak for five <laughs> or ten seconds, which of course. <laughs> You know, mere mortals like ourselves, we know not to violate that rule of, uh, of dead air, right? First of all, in this business, five seconds is an eternity when the music ends. And, yeah, he... he well, and I one of, one of the first things that popped into my head uh, when uh, I got over the initial shock of Jerry's death this morning was the semi-annual sex survey. My God, they practically had to turn the radio station into a war zone, warn people not to listen, and he would chortle his way through an entire week of, where did you do it? You were leaning against a fence in the north end? What? <laughs> it was just crazy. Yeah, I, re I remember, yeah, I didn't, so after that thing was over, I really didn't want to come into the studio that much, because I didn't know what the hell had been going on in there. <laughs> well, that's true. It, it was, it's just remarkable. I, the only sad, well, the sad thing, of course, is that he's gone. The 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 great thing is he had such a full and rich life uh, as a performer. And the the sad thing is that near the end of his life, he he wasn't as fulfilled as I guess he would have hoped to be. Because Jerry Williams was the kind of guy that, uh, without a talk show, just felt sort of at odds with himself, you know. And you know, it was, I always think, Gene, of, of of Elvis Presley, you know, of a guy yeah. who, you know, had it all and should have should have uh, should have had a great life and should have enjoyed himself, but he never did. And I, and I just get this feeling that sometimes Jerry didn't enjoy it as much as he should have. You know, I think you're right. Our offices were side by side when I worked at RKO, and and uh, in fact, you came through a door from the hallway, and then you, there were two doors, one into my office and one into his, and I. Many is the midday that I would sit in there prepping a program with a producer, and Jerry would get into a screaming match on the telephone with somebody over something. Usually, it turned out to be relatively insignificant, but you know, he he. There were times when he did not appear to be a very happy guy. He, uh, I tell you though, he's you know, and the other thing, Gene, is you you know this, and 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 we all, everybody who's in the business knows it that. As, as you, it's it's almost like pitching a baseball game. Some day, you know, some days yeah. you have it, some days you yeah. don't, and you know, yeah. and a lot of the time you don't know till you get up out there on the mound, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and you throw the first few pitches, and this guy was on top of the world at age sixty-seven. I yeah. still, that's the that's the thing that gets me is the the, the longevity, the, just the the fact that he could keep it going at that level for that long, that amount of time. Well, it was unbelievable. I mean, he had an encyclopedic knowledge of the topic material he covered, as we both know. Mm -hmm. He never forgot anything, particularly if it involved Mike Dukakis. And uh, and he uh, <laughs> he just he 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 was the kind. He's the he's like the Dalmatian who retires and hears the fire bell go off and starts to run. <laughs> I mean, he Jerry was talk radio. Yeah. Talk radio was Jerry for a long period of time in New England. Yeah, and, and you know the thing is that I was listening to the with the Ted Kennedy. Uh, uh, interview today again and it reminded me of something he used to do even if he wasn't a hundred percent up on a topic what he would do is he first he would read he'd read the the important paragraphs right and then then when he come back to the debate he would read the paragraphs again only he would not credit the person <laughs> so all of a sudden ted kennedy thinks he's got jerry on the ropes but all of a sudden, he's not arguing against Jerry. He's arguing against Anthony Lewis. <laughs> and Anthony Lewis spent two hours putting this sentence together. Yeah, you know, and yeah. Jerry, and, and of course, Ted, Ted is just looking for an ice cube. Yeah, and he's going, sure. where, where did, that's about the time he just, you know, said, I, I'm, you know, I've had it, you know. And, 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 and the thing is, and I also, <laughs> did you ever see him when he turned down, when someone would be irritating him and he would just turn down? The volume. Oh yeah, it'd be like the guy was the the wicked yeah. witch of the West and uh, and the Wizard of Oz melting. Exactly. You know, he, and he could, as as we both know, he could be absolutely relentless. I mean, one of the highest compliments Jerry was ever paid. I don't think I ever told him. Uh, I was invited to speak to a dinner of some Greek organization there in New England at one time, and I went to do that. And Governor Dukakis was on the dais uh, yeah. as an honored guest. Uh, and I think he he had left the governor's job and had run for president and was no longer really active in politics. And uh, Dukakis got up when he made his remarks and he said, "Well, it's a good thing you didn't have Jerry Williams here to speak, or I wouldn't have showed up." And I thought, you know, you think that's a shot, but that's a great compliment, you know. It is. It really yeah. is. I mean, somewhere somehow uh, we haven't heard from uh, Governor Dukakis. Oh, I don't think I don't think you're likely to hear from <laughs> Governor Dukakis. I, I, I mean, uh, well, look, look at the whole thing. I mean, you were a part of it, so you know when when yeah. he, when he finally 
created the governors, and you three, you and uh, Barbara and he would sit in the studio and run the state on the microphone. It was just priceless. Priceless. Well, Gene Burns, we really appreciate you joining us here uh, this afternoon. And yeah. uh, you, how, how are things going at KGO? Things are doing very well, thanks. I hear you're doing great guns. And all, yeah. out here on the left coast, we're doing okay. I mean, things the station's doing well. And I yeah. love it. You've been, you've been number one in the book, uh, KGO, for what, 99 books in a row? 99 books. That's quite a, that's quite, a, uh, yeah. quite a run. We're a little worried. We need one more to hit the century mark. And then I don't know why. Maybe the boss will retire. I don't know. Okay, Gene Burns, thanks, pop Ellie. in the next time you're in uh, New England. I Be know you are all the time. Thanks a lot. Okay, thanks a lot. That's Gene Burns. He worked with Jerry Williams uh, for, for many years. He uh, he had the midday show before Jerry came on. 1-877-469-4322. We'll be back to more calls about Jerry Williams when we return. I'm Howie Carr. Boston's WRKO, the talk, talk station. WRKO Skyway Patrol. Let's start off on a route to westbound, getting word of a new problem just after 190, a rollover right in the median strip. Okay. Ma'am, would you like me to stay on the line with you? Oh, no, ma'am. There's, there's people here. Thank you. On Star, always there, always on. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Uh, although, you know, that's been something I've been kind of embarrassed about, although every year that we turn the clocks and we just did it, I always think of that conversation. But when I heard about it today, I was telling somebody at work, and we had a good laugh about it. So No, we all we all have those uh, memories of Jerry Williams. It's just, uh, he, that, and that's and again, that's, that, that's one of the things that made the show great, is when he had nothing going on, he'd do something like that, just pick up a phone and start hassling. And you, were part, you were part of the show that day, Bob. <laughs> I was. I <laughs> Thanks, thanks for the call. Dot, you're next with Howie Carr. Go ahead, Dot. Hi. Hi. I really admire and respect the jury. And I, you know, I'm, I'm going to miss him a lot. Well... He'd, he'd tell you to he'd tell you to move on with your life, uh, Dot. You know, and you just you know you know don't uh, don't lose the memories, but uh, you, you have to uh, you have to keep on living. Oh well, I'm gonna live. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Dean Burns kind of stole my thunder. I wanted to remind people about his many interviews with Malcolm X. Mm-hmm. He seemed to be proud of them that they were dangerous. Oh yeah, he. Hey, they were they were dangerous. I mean, he and again, he was in Chicago during the uh, during the Democratic convention in 1968. I think that was a pretty uh, dicey time for uh, for liberal talk show hosts. You know, when Mayor Daley had the uh, police running wild, uh, clubbing uh, delegates, politicians, and uh, the street people out there. Thanks, thanks for the call, Dot. Brad, you're next with Howie Carr. Go ahead, Brad. Howie, hi. Uh, it was really great to hear Gene Burns. Uh, Gene and Jerry were just big personal heroes of mine uh, over the years. I'm 38 years old. I've lived in New, in- in New England all my life. Mm-hmm. And my mom used to listen to Jerry in the kitchen on the old AM radio. And, and I sort of grew up with him as just sort of being one of those voices right. from your youth that's just you sort of always expected to be there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this kind of hits pretty hard. It, I learned a lot from Jerry. I, I think one of the biggest things was how to balance your cynicism. You know, there's a lot of people out there who are cynical about politicians. You don't have to go very far to find somebody who's going to say, ah, you know, you can't trust any of them. But what Jerry showed me was that you could you could be cynical and not get sucked in, but still be involved and engaged. And he talked about this stuff every day. Yeah. And... Yet he was never uh, a rump squad, as you would say. No, <laughs> no, he, he never, he never was. Thanks for the call, Brad. Uh, Paul in the car. You're next with Howie Carr. Go ahead, Paul or Kevin. Go ahead, Kevin. Yes, Howie. <laughs> yes. I want to. I, I think it's uh, pretty decent of you to uh, have this tribute to uh, Jerry Williams today. Thank you. It's really decent of you, Howie. Th- he gave me my start. What? What? Should, I mean, there's no, no other way I could play this one, Kevin. How'd you get started on the radio? He he had me he had me on he he brought me I mean I'd, I'd set in a couple times but here and there but he brought me in during the Democratic convention to sit with him every day in Atlanta eighty eight on Howie Carr. Variety, quality, good prices, and friendly, efficient service. That's what families want from their supermarkets, and that's what we give them at Pathmark. Eileen Scott, CEO of Pathmark Supermarkets, and her fleet business financial services partner Kathy Garrity. Consumers depend on supermarkets to provide essential products and services. We work with Eileen and her team to face any financial challenge. We're in a cash business, so we need a bank we can trust to handle it efficiently. That's why Fleet manages the cash for over 50 Pathmark stores. Plus, we help meet Eileen's lending and payroll needs. When we wanted to go public in 2000, Fleet helped us refinance debt to make it happen. Now they're giving us ideas tailored to our employees. And you know, we've already begun discussing custom payroll enhancements that would be great for your workforce. You know us so well, it feels like you work for us. I do work for you. (laughs) To see what Fleet can do for you, call 1-866-270-4014 today. Fleet Business Financial Services. More businesses turn to Fleet. Fleet Bank member FDIC. Now this update from the talk station, WRKO. I'm Listo Fisher. Six months suspension without pay, but only if she apologizes. That's the recommendation of a hearing officer in the case of Superior Court Judge Maria Lopez. who's being disciplined for the way she handled a transgendered child molester. The dean of Austin talk radio is dead. Jerry Williams died today at Mass General. He was 79, credited with inventing issue-oriented talk. Now the latest on Iraq from ABC News. 
could be a connection between Iraq and al-Qaeda. ABC's Ann Compton with details. The search for weapons of mass destruction has yet to uncover hard evidence, but today the U.S. government does believe it has captured a potentially important figure, an al-Qaeda operative in Baghdad. That would provide new credibility to the U.S. claim that Saddam was helping the terrorist network. And Compton, ABC News, the White House. U.S. officials are still trying to figure out what happened in a firefight in the Iraqi city of Fallujah, west of Baghdad. The Iraqis say 13 people died when U.S. troops fired on them. Army Lieutenant Scott Wood says his soldiers were only defending themselves during a demonstration. The crowd massed against us came uh, close towards our sector, no more than 20 feet outside of our sector, opened up with AK-47s directly to our location. U.S. officials say they can't confirm any fatalities. The Iraqi man who helped save Private Jessica Lynch is being rewarded with asylum in the U.S. Jerry Preston, ABC News. WRKO News Time now at 4.32. WRKO Skyway Patrol downtown, lower deck of 93, looking pretty good, just merge congestion. Rutherford Ave inbound, the ramp to the Tobin Bridge getting reports of an accident there. Artery southbound is jammed up. Sumner Tunnel got that left lane closure inside. The expressway south is jammed down to Mass Ave, then East Milton down to the split. Outside of town, Route 2 westbound, get a rollover in the median just after Route 190, not causing much of a delay, just watch out there. 290 eastbound still working that tractor trailer rollover right at Route 12. 128 northbound is so from the Pike to 20, and 93 northbound is heavy spot pond to 128. I'm Jim Daly, WRKO Skyway Patrol. Thank you, Jim. WRKO Money Scope. Ginny Casola live from the news desk of the Wall Street Journal, brought to you by Fleet Bank. Ginny. An early rally lost steam listo, and profit takers kept gains to a minimum today. Dow Jones Industrials were up, but just by 31 to 85.02. NASDAQ gained 9, and the S&P was up 3. Investors were encouraged by the latest reading on consumer confidence, up sharply from last month. Some Fidelity Investments employees will find a little more in their paychecks this year. The company says it has been navigating successfully through these hard times, and employees with a base salary of less than $75,000 will be eligible for merit raises this year. Again, the Dow up 31, NASDAQ up 9. From the news desk of the Wall Street Journal, I'm Ginny Cosola on Boston's WRKO, the talk station. Who? Who? What? What? When? When? Where? Where? Why? Why? Get your words worth worth. with Boston's WRKO, the talk station. 1-877-469-4322. The Trump line's a little iffy today, obviously, uh, because we're talking about someone who's passed on. But if you would like to give give a call in, this is a good day to get a message on. You can rip me. Feel free to rip me. What an ungrateful, treacherous bastard I am. You know the you know the routine. I'll give you a hint. Several people have asked if you've made inquiries about Jerry's raincoat. <laughs> okay, so don't use the raincoat joke. We've got that one. It's, we've got that one in repeated forms, apparently. If you would like to call about something else, may I suggest Maria Lopez, the uh, judge. Uh, the hearing officer today, uh, uh, former former Judge E. George Dare, has recommended a, uh, a six-month suspension without pay for Maria Lopez and, and wants her to... Uh, apologize formally to the prosecutor whom she dressed down in the uh, transvestite thing. So if you want to give uh, Maria Lopez some grief and her porn boss husband, uh, Steve Mendich from the Phoenix, there's a suggestion for you. 1-877-469-4322. You know, one of uh, Jerry's uh, great crusades was the uh, prison that was going to be built in New Braintree, which was a bucolic little community in Worcester County. And uh, Jerry just went, uh, went to the wall to stop that thing. And, uh, and and it, he did he did stop it and uh, and one of the people that uh, that was involved in that in the, at the time uh, and, and is still involved in politics is uh, Senator Steve Brewer. Are you there, Steve? Hi, Howie. How Hi. are you doing? Good. What are your memories of Jerry, Steve? Well, I felt really bad today when I heard about that on my way into the state house about Jerry Williams. But you know, he never quit on that town for stopping the prison in New Braintree. And Singly, he and uh, Dapper O'Neill, and then when Bill Weld stood on a bale of hay out in New Braintree, and he said, if you elect me governor, I won't put a uh, prison in this town. And Weld kept his word. But Jerry Williams, a couple of years, that was a roller coaster. There was yeah. a lot of time. There was $25 million worth of tax dollars that was spent out there, and people were ready to give up. And Jerry Williams never gave up, and he was, he was tenacious. And, you know, he would come back to New Braintree, and he was like the conquering hero. Uh, he's a good guy, and he was a good guy to have on your side. And uh, yeah. uh, I always remember when you go through New Braintree that it stayed pretty nice and green and pastoral because of a guy named Jerry Williams. That's in your district, right? 
Oh, it is. That and 29 other towns, along with uh, <laughs> BB's hometown. Peter Sham. Or yes, Peter Sham, whatever it's, however it's pronounced. I it's, appreciate the tribute you have for Jerry today. Hey, listen, why don't you guys ought to get a, you know, he would appreciate, this is one thing, he, lo he loved uh, tributes like this. You, you guys ought to so, suggest to the selectmen that they put up a plaque or something for him, Steve. You know, I think I, I might do that, or planting even a tree out there or something. You know, would you come out if we do that? I'll come, yes, I'll come out for that. We'll get yes. you a box of donuts, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure there's some chocolate ones in there. That's all I ask for. But yeah, I'll come out there for that. We can uh, that that would be that would be a nice tribute, and it would. And you know what? That would that would that's something he would have appreciated a lot. I'll pass it along to the board of selectmen, and again, kudos to you for your tribute today. Okay, thank you. That's Senator Steve Brewer. He uh, he was involved in the uh, the new brain tree, and I'll tell you that that's one of the things. Jerry uh, Jer Jerry was not a uh, he had high ratings always, but he was not a ratings driven person because there were some days even I, one of his biggest fans, I'd be driving around and it'd be another new brain tree show, and I go, oh my god, oh, I can't take it, I cannot stand any more new brain tree, and I'd turn it off. Uh, ch uh, check your next with Howie Carr. Go ahead, check. Yeah, good afternoon. Hi. Hi. Uh over drove a truck around the city of Boston for 50 years, and I always listened to talk radio, and he was one of my favorites. And one particular day, he had on a financial advisor, and this gentleman talked about, you never invest money over 18 months. Uh-huh. Well, my wife, that particular day, had to go down and roll over a few CDs that we had. Right. And she rolled them, this was in the early, 81, 82. She rolled them over for five years at 12%. <laughs> I, I wish she would have rolled them over for 30 years. Right. So, so in other words, Jerry had another stiff of a guest on. Well, he had but, a fortun stiff. but fortunately, you didn't take his advice, well, Jack. Well, she did. Well, when I came home from work, we had a row about it. Because, of course, 81, 82, this, there was still a high inflation rate. And uh, so it was, it, was the pri it was the prime time to uh, to buy a CD because pretty soon the inflation was gone and the rates were down about 3 or 4%. Thanks, Chick, for the call. I appreciate it. Chip Ford now joining us. Uh, he's from uh, Citizens for Limited Taxation, and uh, he's the partner of uh, Barbara Anderson, who was one of the three governors along with me and uh, Jerry on the air every Tuesday. How ironic! It's Tuesday afternoon. We're doing basically a governor's show, a, a one a one man governor's show, because uh, Barbara's on the road. Chip was involved in the uh, in the seatbelt, uh, the first seatbelt referendum, right? Uh, right, Chip. Well, more than involved. If it wasn't for Jerry, I never would have been involved. That was the first thing I ever did in politics, and he sucked me into starting the committee to repeal the mandatory seatbelt law, promising me I'll never have to do any public speaking. And if you don't do public, well, as, as your audience knows, that's probably one of the toughest things in the world to get in front of, on a stage in front of an audience. Right. He swore I wouldn't have to do it, and I was doing it like a week later. <laughs> and he said, see, I always knew you could. <laughs> Yeah, he, he is. You were just a, you were a listener, right? Yeah, I was a listener. Yeah. I, I was out lettering a boat. Yeah, you were you were yeah you were a sign painter, and yeah. you just and, you, and it just PO'd you just like it PO'd a lot of people yeah. that they had sneakily passed this legislation to uh, require mandatory seatbelts after after they'd said as they have with so many things that they'd never do it, and then they did it. Well, he uh, he had that rally at Gardner Auditorium in the yeah. middle of a winter blizzard. Yeah, and packed Gardner Auditorium. That's when I first got involved. I went into there. I got my petitions. Uh -huh. But I don't got my signatures, and uh, we got it on the ballot. And I called him up one day and says, are you going to have a, a campaign or anything? And he says, well, why don't you come on in and talk about it? And I said, come in, <laughs> talk to Jerry in person? Oh, my God. <laughs> Next yeah. thing you know, he's got me signed up running the committee, and uh, I ran the campaign that year. You, you know, you, when, you listen to the, when you listen to people like me and Chip say that, you know, like he was our, you know, we, we grew up listening to him and all that, I mean... It's not only you know. It's not only me and Chip, and you know people like us. It's Paul Songus, who you know, if he hadn't had cancer and he hadn't had a guy and a campaign manager who was stealing the money, Nick Rizzo, and he hadn't been running against such a sleazeball like Bill Clinton, he might have been president. And and he always used to say that it was he could never believe it. Paul Senator Paul Songus, when he would get to come in and sit next to Jerry <laughs> Williams, it was like his child. He said it. He said it was my he was my childhood. He